Hey bag maker, today I'm going to be talking about the binding baby, various fabrics that I've added to my stash. The book review will be for a book called Take Flight and I'll be showing the next two out of four brand new upcoming sewing patterns. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to Social Sunday. I see Sandy's watching from California, Kate from Idaho, and Sherry from Florida, also Sherry from Australia. Welcome to Social Sunday. I'm so excited that you're joining me for the show, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording later on during your week. I have a bunch of fun things to share with you, including two of my brand new upcoming sewing patterns. And before I get started, just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but just cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the books, fabrics, notions, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can find out more information there. So before we get over to the notion of the week, I just wanted to remind you that the September challenge is underway. This month's challenge is twofold. You can either choose to make the Frisian pouch from Minikin season three or a So Sweetness project where you've added a form of embellish embellishment such as ribbons, buttons, um, uh, what else did we have on the list? Um, the link to the full details for both of those challenges are in the description. And I see a bunch of entries have been added there so far. So uh, check that out as well as uh, take a look at what your fellow sewists are making and entering into the challenge. So the notion that I've chosen for this week is called the binding baby. Danny's going to switch over to the overhead camera so that I can show you what this looks like. Uh, it comes in different, it's made of wood and it comes in different uh, painted designs. So I picked up the snowman a few months ago. They have other um, themes such as animals. There's sort of really cute doll shaped uh, characters. And what this is, is sort of a wooden peg with uh, a slot through the piece and it holds your binding strips. And because it also has this hole on the binding, similar to a hole that you'll find on the bottom of a spool of thread, if your sewing machine happens to have um, two pegs for thread, attaching thread on the back of the machine, my Juki has uh, two pegs for spools of thread. Um, or if you have a freestanding thread holder, you can also um, use this uh, binding holder and put it on your sewing machine and then as you're sewing attaching the binding you can kind of just have the binding pulling off the, your binding holder as you're attaching it so super handy it's also nice for after you've prepared the binding for getting it ready for your next project and so when you start adding it to the spool you just kind of slit the end of the fabric through this and then you just kind of wind it all the way around. So I prepared this binding quite a while ago. I just haven't gotten around to using it yet. So I thought it was the perfect opportunity to add it to this binding baby and just a simple tool. But I really like, like I said, I like the fact that you can just go ahead and um, in many cases add it to your sewing machine and work through that way. My old method was just having the binding pooling around my feet, which is not Number one, not super um, handy for sewing the binding to the quilt. And number two, my sewing room is not necessarily super neat right now. So lint, um, hair, I'm always finding hair stuck to my carpet and fabric. So um, a nice way to keep it clean also. So this is the binding baby. And the link to this is in the description in case you're interested in seeing the other designs that are available. So I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Do you prefer your binding to be applied, whether it's for quilts or for bag making, because occasionally there is a bag pattern that will come up where um, binding is required. So do you prefer to attach your binding by either machine, by hand, or in some cases, not at all, if you're perhaps you're not a fan of uh, attaching binding at all. So let me know in the comments. 
When I first started sewing bags, uh, I really hated binding and I was only making the occasional quilt, so I didn't really have um, much opportunity to work with binding, but over the years I've come to enjoy it and um, for quilts at least I definitely only attach binding by machine. So um, I have a, a little bit of news and I'm super excited and uh, talking about it, it doesn't even uh, feel real quite yet, but Danny's going to put a picture on the screen and uh, this past Wednesday <laughs> I purchased a horse. So. My very first horse, uh, childhood dream for me. Uh, she's eight years old. I've been riding her for the past six weeks or so. And she's a uh, thoroughbred. She used to be a racehorse. Um, thoroughbreds are sort of identified by a tattoo on the underside of their lips. So I, on Wednesday, I was checking the number under her lip and you can go online and check um, that identification number to match it to um, the horse's uh, racing record and their actual registered name. And I found out that she, uh, in fact, raced twice uh, and won a whole whopping $242. So uh, clearly her career was not in racing, but um, hopefully we'll be really good partners. And um, I'm just so excited. And I have to say her current name is also uh, Sarah with no H, which I think is hilarious. At first I, wasn't sure if I would change it, but already I'm getting tired of talking about her to people as if I'm talking about myself in the third person. So I've been uh, keeping a short list of possible future names for uh, Sarah the horse. And so far, Olive is at the top of the list, but I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm going to sit with it uh, till the end of the weekend. So I'll see how I feel about it after that. So I couldn't wait to share that great news with you. I know it's not sewing related, but I'm um, super excited and um, hopefully it'll reality will set in soon. And <laughs> Cause like I said, it doesn't quite feel real yet. Um, but uh, related to that, I have another question for you. Let me know this answer on the comments, either on YouTube or Facebook, wherever you watch our show. As a child, what was your favorite animal? Perhaps you um, had stuffed animals of a particular animal, or maybe you read a lot of books or had toys of this particular animal. Let me know in the comments. Mine was always a horse. I always had stuffed animal horses, read uh, most of the books I was reading were about horses, had model horses. Uh, so um, lots of horses in my room as a, a child. Um, Danny is now going to switch to the overhead camera because I have a bunch of fun fabrics that I recently added to my stash that I wanted to share with you. This one is a panel, so I'm going to save this one till the end. This fabric line is actually called, um, I think the name is hilarious, it's called Rebel Without a Claws. So it's Christmas themed fabrics, but um, I really like the dinosaurs wearing uh, Santa hats. This one's really cute. This mushroom print, um, I feel like it's not necessarily a Christmas fabric, which I think is awesome, can be used for other projects. I can see pouches unless you look terribly close at this um, you know to take a look at the presents um, I really do like the the mushroom print in this one this ne next fabric from the same line is um, snow globes which is really cool and for the last print uh, Danny's going to switch to the to the front camera for just a second Danny I have two fabrics to show in the front camera so this is from that fabric line and let's see how much I can show you on camera because this is kind of large. It's a panel print with, um, there we go, I think you get the idea for this, uh, Santa and a reindeer. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that fabric. Um, and there's one more panel print that I wanted to share with you, but I just thought it was really cool. Maybe I'll make some sort of banner I don't, for the house or on the holidays, I'm not really sure yet. And this other print I purchased actually a, a whole bolt of because I wanted to make, um, reusable Christmas like drawstring wrapping paper. So there's six designs, so I'll do my best to share with you. Actually, Danny, I think this will work for the overhead camera, so let's try that out first. I'll try to show you all six of the designs. So uh, this one right here, this one is uh, sewing themed. We've got one with uh, a sleigh being pulled by a unicorn. This one is hilarious, grumpy Christmas cat. And these are designed by Sarah Watts for Ruby Star Society. 
And so this is the single repeat. So you get the six designs, um, super cute. And like I said, I'm going to make some sort of reusable gift wrap. Um, as a kid, my mom always had reusable gift wraps. So I thought it was pretty, I'm pretty familiar with the concept of that. This is just a one-off that I picked up, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was really cute. Um, this one's call called Cowboy Eddie. And link to this one is in the description. And then recently on one of our live shows, someone emailed about um, cotton hemp canvas. And so I picked up a few bits of organic hemp fabric. So this navy blue is uh, a canvas weight. And I really like the, the drape of it. It feels nice. It doesn't feel too stiff. And I like it. It has a really subtle sort of sheen. So I think this would be really great for bags or pouches where you're looking for a neutral. And then I picked up, these are also hemp, but these are lightweight hemp. And these remind me of, if you've ever worked with shot cottons before, this is sort of a thinner, drapey, slightly drapier, kind of, it also reminds me of chambray, but um, again, it's on the thinner side. So I picked up these two colors just to check out what they, we're going to be like, I didn't know ahead of time since I've, I don't have any hemp fabrics in my stash, but um, I think these are really nice and I'll do my best to come up with a, these would probably be good for a garment, like a, a little blouse or something like that. So all of the links to all of the fabrics that I talked about are in the description in case you're interested in checking out more. And I know we're far away from Christmas now, but um, at the rate I've been sewing lately, I think I need to start um, getting onto those uh, gift wrap bags soon to have them finished in time. So Danny's going to put a few pictures on the screen. Um, this week I received an email from Mia and she made this lovely tea set and the, she sewed this for an upcoming silent auction um, for a food bank that's coming up in March. Um, she works there and the reason she sent me the email with these pictures of the tea set is because actually I'll just read her email because I printed it out and I love the accessories too. The accessories are super adorable, a little play set with all of the items needed for a tea party and uh, it's just a quick email. I'm going to uh, read it from Mia who made that project. Uh, Mia says, for well over a year I have wanted to make a Mad Hatter tea party set but didn't know how to do the bag part. I've used what I learned in your videos to figure out how to finally be able to make it the way I always pictured it in my head. I could not have done it without your tutorials. I will be donating this to a silent auction charity for our local food bank, so thank you. Um, I just thought that was amazing and so much creativity went into that project. It's unbelievable and just looking at that, I can tell a lot of figuring and a lot of um, math went into uh, getting that tea set to come together. So. Uh, congratulations, Mia. What an amazing project and uh, truly, I think, a work of art. So I just wanted to share that with you all so, so you can enjoy those pictures from uh, Mia. So the book review for this week is a book called Take Flight, Fun with Textile Collage, and it's written by Emily Taylor. I Maybe it was last year. I reviewed another book from Emily Taylor, and this is the newest one, so I wanted to share it with you. Thank you, Danny. So this is the cover of it. And basically Emily shows you in this book how to make the quilt on the cover with these birds. So um, I'm really into birds. So this book really caught my eye. So the beginning of the book, Emily goes into um, discussion of colors and fabrics for making a quilt using the collage method. And she also discusses what types of materials that she uses uh, to make the quilts. And uh, at the beginning and at the end of the book, there's also some extra pictures of um, some collage quilts that she's made, which um, like that tea set uh, works of art. And I, I just really love the florals and the colors, really bright colors in this particular quilt. All right, so here's the discussion of the different materials needed. She walks you through that. And then um, these are the birds that are included in the quilt. I think I'm this one, yeah. Um, all right, so I wanted to share with you um, up close from the book um, as she works through the different birds. And then they end up being part of the finished quilt. So I just really love, um, 
sort of the explanation and you can see all the different types of fabrics included in the different birds like this duck. Uh, the sandhill crane, which I'm a huge fan of. The owl, I like all the neutrals represented in the owl. And then let's see, oh, here's the, here's the finished quilt. So the, the templates uh, to make the birds are in the back of the book. And um, I'm also going to, to share with you some of the quilts that she has in the artist gallery. So these are not part of the instructions, but these are just inspiration for other types of projects that you can turn into uh, collage quilts. I also wanted to mention, I included a link to Emily's website. She sells also video courses, and I think there might've been one or two also free courses that you can check out if you're interested um, in this technique of quilt collage. So um, as you know, I'm a fan of video courses and um, there's the horse for the last one. So um, the book lo looks really great. Um, also, if you're interested, check out those video courses, link in the description. And this book is called Take Flight Fun with Textile Collage. So I think it's amazing in the sewing and quilting world, all of the different niche areas for different forms of artwork like that collage quilt. Um, I, I consider also bag making sort of a niche or a subcategory of sewing and quilting. And there's just so many options if you like working with fabric, so many things to learn out there. Um, I certainly knew, learn new things every day, even um, as far as bag making goes. So um, I think it's just great fun that there's always uh, new things that we can try and get under our sewing machine. So. Um, Ooh, oh, wrong one, Danny. Um, Danny's favorite part of the Social Sunday show, we'd like to invite all of the bag makers to stand proud. Let us know in the comments that you're part of the So Sweetness squad. I'm so happy that you're here um, from both myself and Danny. Thank you so much for supporting our family, supporting our business, and we really appreciate it so much. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, now time for the big reveal. So you may or may not know, I have four brand new patterns coming up to be released on September 26th. Uh, it's four new patterns as well as the videos. And tonight I'll be showing the first two projects. And then if you'll join us for Social Sunday next Sunday, Danny will be on the show next week. I'll be sharing the second two projects. So the first two projects, the first one, Hold this. All right, uh, I think that was clapping. I can't hear it on my no, end. No, it was mysterious, like. <laughs> um, this first project is called the Sky Harbor Tote, and it's a tote bag with these hidden straps. Um, I use this technique also for the sewing machine travel bag, and I also have a free technique video on my YouTube channel in case you'd like to add this to another bag. Uh, so it's got the hidden straps. I've attached rivets. The rivets are optional. So Chicago screws will work, or neither is per perfectly fine, and uh, the special part of this bag is, uh, let's see if I can hold that. There we go. Um, there's a decorative side zipper that sort of reveals um, a different fabric on this side portion of the bag. So um, I didn't design this to be a convertible bag, so it's just meant to stay open, but I thought it was a fun way, especially there's a huge selection of different zipper tapes and different zipper finishes. I thought it was a really great way to show off um, a really fun and decorative zipper. And it's also got uh, a recessed zipper for the top closure. Uh, let me see, my memory's escaping me, so let's see what uh, what's in the inside of the bag. So there's uh, a slip pocket on one side, and then on the other side, there's uh, a zipper pocket in the lining of the bag. So this first one's called the Sky Harbor bag. And let me share with you the second project. The second project is called the Starling Bag, and I actually used uh, for this fabric, it's actually a garment fabric designed by Sarah Watts, but I really, sometimes I find a garment fabric that I really like that's not available in quilting cotton. So what I did with this particular print is I first interfaced it with Pellon Shape Flex interfacing, and then I used the interfacing as called for in the pattern. So the Pellon Shape Flex just kind of smooths, smooths things out, takes out the drape, um, or stretch if applicable, and uh, you're off to the races. So this pattern gives two different options for the exterior fabric for the interfacing. This version is made with foam interfacing, and I also made one with wax canvas and fusible fleece 
so a slightly slouchier softer bag and this this one in the foam has more structure to it so it's got a side zipper on either end and let me open this up so the side portion each side zipper has its own separate uh, pocket pretty good size it'll fit uh, more than enough room for a cell phone it has uh, an adjustable strap that you can clip on either side and then uh, I've been really liking recessed zippers lately so it's got a recessed zipper and there's also a zipper pocket um, in the lining side so these are the first two projects um, I was really excited to share them with you I hope you enjoyed them and then remember next Sunday I'll be sharing the second two brand new projects and um, the back there there will be a backpack included in uh, the set of new patterns. So I think there were some questions earlier today on social media about the four new patterns. So it'll be four new patterns, four new videos. We will have um, included at no additional cost, um, S op um, not optional, <laughs> um, SVG files in case you have an electric cutting machine like the Cricut Maker, Scan and Cut, or a Silhouette, um, and so on. Um, projector files in case you have a projector that you cut your fabric out with, uh, usually a ceiling projector, and uh, AO files. And AO files are just large format paper that you can get printed at your local copy shop so that you don't have to tape pieces together. However, in the pattern instructions, the usual printable at home pattern pieces will be included as always. There will also be available acrylic templates for all four of the patterns. And I'm trying to think what else. I think I covered everything. Um, the patterns will be available as a four pack, the four pack video bundle, and they will also be available individually. So um, for instance, if you're only individual, only interested in the PDF pattern and not the video, you can buy the pattern by itself for just one project. Um, so uh, there's several different options. And again, that will be uh, September 26th when those will be available. So, um, I'm going to be getting to some live questions in just a second. Uh, before we get over to those uh, live questions, I wanted to let you know I will be giving away at the end of the show a four pack video bundle. I'll be giving one away live and then one will be included in our regular uh, giveaway at the end of the show. So if you have a question for me, let me know in the comments. It can be a bag making question, question about a notion or tool, general sewing question, um, if you think of it, you can type a question mark before your question or you can type it in capital letters. It just helps Danny easily pick out the questions from among the comments. And if you've forgotten to do that, no problem. He's um, scanning his screen uh, for the questions as they come through. So Rebecca says, where do you find these unique fabrics? So that's a really great question, Rebecca. Some notions and fabrics that I sh share on the show were um, suggested or recommended to me by viewers. Other things I find... Um, I sus subscribe to email newsletters for several fabric shops and I try to keep a close eye out on newsletters as they come through so that I can uh, see what new fabrics are out there um, and purchase things that I can share on the show. So those are probably the two main um, ways that I come across new fabrics that I will later share on Social Sunday. Rhonda says, where did you get the hemp fabrics? So the link to the Etsy shop that I purchased those hemp fabrics are in the description. I'm sure there's other shops online or on Etsy that um, stock hemp fabrics, but I, I really, I chose this shop because they had a good selection of different uh, weights and colors. And if you're looking for something thinner, uh, the lightweight hemp was the one that I shared that looked like the shot cotton. And the thicker one, the canvas, that was just the, the hemp organic canvas. Kate says, would you consider a tutorial for the reusable gift wrap? Uh, possibly. I'm not sure if I'm going to go with um, coming up with something or using a pattern out there that already exists by another designer. So uh, I'll certainly share them on the show when I finish the, the gift bags and I will let you know uh, where to get the pattern. Bonita says, do you feel there's enough detailed instructions to translate those skills to project of your own from the collage book? Um, that's a really great question. There is, let me just flip through the that collage book really quick. So I 
I feel like it's possible by taking um, things such as a photograph. Um, let me have Danny switch to the overhead camera and back again really quick. So I, I feel like it's relatively brief, but as long as you're able to translate a photograph or an illustration into different shades of gray using a grayscale, and I think you can also do this with a picture on your cell phone, but basically you want to make sure you have the different, these different gradients so that when you start to put your, let me find one of the animals when you start to put the animal together, you need to have the different shades of gray or different shades of color present so that the different features of the animal stand out, such as the shadows around the eyes, um, the tufts of feathers at the head, and so on. So if, um, I, I feel like the, I haven't taken the video classes, so it's hard to say how the book compares to the video classes I'm assuming the video classes are a lot more in depth because she's actually making the projects uh, during the class for the video. But if you are pretty confident about translating your design, I think it's certainly doable with the instructions in the book. But again, I've linked to uh, both the book and the video courses in the description so you can peruse both options and see which one is the, the best uh, one for you. Carla says, why the name Sky Harbor? Sometimes I go to uh, song titles for bag pattern names. Um, that's the case for the Sky Harbor. Uh, for the other three projects, they're all named after animals. So the Starling bag, which I shared with you, is an animal. Um, and then the next two projects that I'll be sharing next Sunday, those are both named after animals as well. I try to investigate a potential sewing pattern design by Googling it. Uh, usually I'll Google the name I'm thinking of and bag and make sure that there's other, not other, either sewing patterns with that name already or um, sometimes there's actually store bought or already finished bags with that name. So I try to avoid those two so then when people are Googling um, the bag name, they only come upon uh, my item rather than. Um, several choices related to bags. Debbie says, could you use Terial Magic instead of Shapeplex to stabilize the fabric? Um, I can't remember if I've used that product before. Is that the product that kind of crinkles everything together? Uh, I'm sort of drawing a blank, but I'm writing myself a note to look, at, look that up after the show. Um, Kim says, are you able to stand up with the new bags to see how they look on? Oh yeah, sure, I can do that. Let me... Danny, is this going to be okay for our Zoom? I'll adjust accordingly. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll do my best. This is, let me push my chair out of the way. All right, so here's the Sky Harbor bag. I'm 5'2 for reference um, as far as my height goes, just in case that information is helpful. Let me cinch up this strap. And here's the, the starling bag. So hopefully that's helpful. And uh, yay for deciding not to wear pajama pants for the show today because sometimes that, that happens. <laughs> Janet says, are these bags going to be sold in a bundle or separately? So both. So the bundle, the four pack video bundle will include all four projects, all four videos. And usually we have the bundles available only for a limited time, approximately 10 days or so. And as soon as the bundle is released, you can also buy the patterns and videos individually if you're only interested in, say, one title. Barbara says, uh, Sarah, do you start your fabrics? Uh, most of the time I do. I, lately I've been using Best Press. In the past I've used Flatter. Um, usually I do use the Best Press starch when I'm preparing fabrics and um, or fabric before I cut it up for uh, quilt blocks for making a quilt. Um, another question, is the hemp fabric expensive? So I think uh, I ha happen to have my invoice here because I wanted to make sure I gave accurate information since this hemp fabric is not something that I normally purchase. So this, um, what did I purchase? I purchased uh, a half a yard of this uh, hemp cotton canvas and from this particular shop when I ordered it, it was 
about $13. And for the lighter weight hemp fabrics, I purchased a half yard each and it was about $9 for each piece, if that is helpful. Uh, what inspires you when you create a new bag pattern? So I think, well, if you'll notice in these two particular bags, I was trying to work in different ways of featuring the zipper. So this one has a side zipper. The other one also has a side zipper, but this one's actually a functional pocket. So the other two projects are, um, I guess, I guess all four projects have different ways of featuring the zippers in the projects. So I don't think I meant to start off with that uh, commonality between all four of the projects, but I, I was just looking for different designs that were not necessarily super complex. Well, the backpack has a lot of fun details in it, but these, these first two bags are relatively quick uh, to put together, and uh, especially this one. This one's really fun. It's just the, the front and the back fabrics and then um, the, the fabrics that go into attaching the, the strap to the bag. Um, Tracy says, Terial Magic is a type of spray starch. Oh, okay, thank you for that. Um, I will still look, up, look that up after the show. Um, then I definitely have not used that before. Frankie says, have you ever used linen to make a bag? What interfacing should be used? Um, I have before. Um, I would recommend um, the Pollen Shape Flex before you attach it to whatever um, interfacing as called for in the pattern. Again, depending on the type of structure you're looking for, but in general, that's uh, what I would go with. Christy says, will you post a supplies list for the new bags? Yes. Um, I will write myself a note or perhaps Michelle's already on that in the Facebook group, but uh, yes, we'll get the supplies list posted. Um, Dawn says, what is the size of the new bags? I don't have my pattern list over here, but let me measure them really quick. <laughs> um, the Sky Harbor bag is 14 inches long by 11 and a half inches tall. That's this one. So 14 inches long, measuring across the bottom, 11 and a half inches tall. And then the other one is... Thirteen inches long across the bottom by twelve inches tall. So, especially if you like working with panel prints, a lot of people do. Um, this would be really great to feature a panel print on the front. Um, Jay says, "Is the side pocket big enough for a tablet like an iPad Mini?" Danny, do you have an iPad over there? We're gonna see if Danny can pass me an iPad. See if it'll fit in there. There's a mini. Okay, thank you. All right, Danny. Pass me an iPad mini. Let's see if that'll fit inside. Um, actually, it does. <laughs> With a bit of room to spare on the side. It just fit in height-wise, but um, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm sure if you had a case for yours, it would. I'm sure it would fit in there also. Great question, Jay. Thank you. Karen says, have you ever used a velvet fabric to make a bag? If so, any tips for working with it? Um, I did... I have to say it was probably maybe nine years ago, so quite a long time ago, I made a little suitcase with um, like velveteen fabric designed by, by Anna Maria Horner for Free Spirit Fabrics. Um, I think I made the same suitcase twice, both with the velveteen fabric. And um, if I recall, I just used my regular sewing machine foot, although I think in that particular case, a walking foot would have been more helpful to kind of feed the fabric in more easily, but um, it was a really unique project and I think it would be really great, especially for um, larger bags or larger projects. Kristen says, do you have a favorite type of solid fabric to use on your bags? Um, I'm not sure if you mean um, a manufacturer who makes like quilting cotton solids or just plain old, what types of solids do I like to use? Um, if you're talking about uh, all the various types of solid fabrics, I love adding a little bit of cork um, in areas for maybe straps or accents. Um, if you're talking about solids, I think um, certainly Kona Solids has the biggest variety. Um, that one's made by Robert Kaufman. And uh, I do have color, co color cards for the different solids in case I'm looking for a particular color. I really like the softness of um, art gallery fabric solids. Um, 
Michael Miller, Miller solids also have a really nice, like a, a slight sheen to them. They feel really nice and soft. Um, Free Spirit solids, Tula Pink has um, a, a lot of really great colors in solid fabrics. So I guess I'm not committed to a particular manufacturer as far as uh, the quilting solids. I usually just go for um, particular colors if I, if I have my eye on a certain one. Dawn says, yes, Terial Magic is for items that are not going to be washed. Okay, interesting. Um, Sandy says, does the wax on wax canvas fabric transfer to clothing when carrying a bag? Um, I haven't had an issue for that. It does certainly feel a little different because it is, you know, covered in wax. And you want to make sure to be careful when assembling a bag with wax canvas in it because you don't want to use your iron to press it. You'll just want to finger press it instead. If and you're sitting out in the sun in the summer, so like it wouldn't. Oh yeah. No, if you're uh, just sitting at like a, you're um, sitting at a, a sporting event. Yeah, I'm not hours. sure. What was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh yeah, when I worked with the wax wax canvas, I used a Teflon foot, or you can also try a walking foot for that. Rob says, when you sew exterior fabric to soft and stable, do you sew right on the line or slightly inside of it? Um, I usually, if you're talking about machine basting the fabric to the soft and stable, I usually sew an eighth of an inch to the inside of the fabric. Um, I've also seen people mention in the Facebook group that they cut the fabric and the foam slightly larger, attached it first, and then um, cut it to size. Um, so there's a few different ways you can attach it, but uh, for me personally, that's what I do. Depending on the shape of the project, um, attach lots of wonder clips to hold everything so it doesn't shift uh, before you get a chance to sew it down. Um, Casey says, has Violet ridden Sarah or Olive yet? Um, she has not. Sarah's actually the youngest horse I've ever ridden. She's eight, ridden, she's eight years old, and um, maybe Violet can ride her eventually, but for now, she's not wild or anything. I just feel like she's, uh, they're not quite at the same level yet. Uh, but Violet has um, hopes and dreams to, we still give Smudge lots of treats all the time, so Violet's always asking and dreaming about riding smudge. So I think one day that'll probably happen sooner than her riding Sarah, I think. Julie says, is wax canvas hard to work with? Do you need a special sewing foot? Um, you probably asked this question before I answered about the Teflon foot, but I did use a Teflon foot for sewing the wax canvas. The wax canvas that I've used in the past is generally a thinner canvas. I really like the Robert Kaufman waxer canvas. I think you can probably still find some on Etsy. There's other wax canvases out there that are thicker weights, but I like the thinner wax canvas so that I can still use um, whatever interfacing that I want to with that, without having to worry about um, extra thickness. Patricia says, have you seen the magnetic clasps you can install the rivet press with? Yes, I did. Thank you for mentioning that because I saw it and then it sort of went out of my head, but I wanted to um, uh, investigate it for the show. So I saw it on, um, if maybe you follow Love You So on Instagram, she posted a video a few days ago about um, her rivet press. She bought a die to install magnetic snaps and I thought it looked awesome. So the magnetic snaps that she installed, the, the back um, just looks like a cap for a rivet. I thought it looked really neat. So there's no prongs like a regular magnetic snap has. So I will try to get some of those ordered. Uh, I usually order my rivet press supplies from Mingus Margo on Etsy. I'll try to see if she has those and order them and maybe I can talk about them on a future show because I saw that and I was like, wow, that, that's sometimes I come across things that seem like a game changer and that kind of is one of those things that seems like a game changer to me. Then he says, I am late. My only kiddo just called and he just got engaged. Congratulations, congratulations, exciting news. Tina said, as far as pinking shears go, what is your favorite go-to brand? And do you use pinking shears in your bag making? I know they're great for making sure fabric does not fray. So in the past, I've used two different brands of pinking shears, one by um, Kai, Olfa and Kai was the other one. Um, the ones by Kai I got later. Um, since I use Kai scissors, I wanted to try the Kai pinking shears. I do like the Kai pinking shears better because I feel like they're a little less difficult on the hands when trying to use them. Um, I should use them for um, like notching curves when um, making bags, but I sort of, um, I don't know, I guess it's just a habit that I use my scissors, but they would be great for notching curved edges when bag making. And um, again, out of the two, I did like the Kai pinking shears a little bit better. 
Dalva says, I know you used Orifil cotton, but have you used any bonded, th bonded thread? I think I have maybe one or two, spool two spools of bonded thread in my stash, but I might have only used them once or twice. So I don't have a ton of experience uh, sewing with bonded thread. But if you're watching this show and you do use bonded thread often, let us know in the comments what you think of it, uh, what you like it, like it for, um, anything like that. And Danny will look out for that comment to post it on the screen. Nancy says, is it possible to purchase individual, video, individual videos for each of the bag patterns? So if you're talking about the new bag patterns, um, you can purchase the individual patterns or videos separate or perhaps in the past if you've purchased a pattern but you want to add a video later, we also have that option on our website. Becky says, I've been enjoying making bags with your patterns for gifts and personal use, but I've seen others comment that they sell at craft fairs. Do you allow people to sell bags made from your patterns? That's a great question. Um, we do allow the home sewist to make um, bags or pouches from any of my patterns and sell them um, online, at, at craft fairs, um, comic cons, things like that. So yes, you certainly can. I love that little uh, graphic photo there. Ruth, do you have a pattern for vinyl cutters and their supplies? I have a brother scan and cut and we take it with us on the weekends and everything is all over the place once we start working on projects. So if you'll go to my website, sosweetness.com, there's a tab at the top for patterns. And then if you click on that, a sub tab will pop up with different option and options and there's an option for SVG files. If you'll click that, you'll see all of the patterns that we currently have with SVG files available. And when those new patterns come out, they will also have um, SVG files uh, to go along with them. Sharon says, why is your opinion on double, uh, what is your opinion on double-sided tape? Some people seem like they tape everything, seems like it would double the bulk to sew through. So if you're talking about, let's see if I have it over here. Um, if you're talking about the Dritz Wash Away Wonder Tape, uh, which is a double-sided tape, um, I do use this a ton for um, making zipper pockets. I use it to temporarily stick um, the zipper tape to the fabric and then I sew the zipper in place. I really like it because um, it eliminates waviness. For instance, if you use traditional pins to uh, pin the zipper to the fabric, sometimes if it looks wavy when it's pinned, it'll also look wavy once you've sewn it in place. So this helps eliminate that. Um, I've not ever had an issue with it gumming up my needle or being difficult to sew through. And it's also water soluble. So if you happen to use it and once you've sewn say your zipper pocket in place you see a little bit of the tape sticking out you can just spritz it with some water kind of rub it with your fingernail and that should this product should dissolve danny are you calling in other questions nope all right uh, jen says do you sell paper patterns or are they pdf only so we stopped selling paper patterns about three years ago so going forward, they'll just be uh, PDF only. Um, so you can either print them at home or if you prefer to um, print the AO files for the patterns that we have them for um, at your local copy shop, you can do that. Or I think my friend Christina uses a, an online service where they mail you the, the AO pages. I think it's called PDF plotters or pattern plotters. I can't remember which one. Um, Alex says, Rivet question, I'm having some trouble with installing rivets. How do I know when to stop hammering the two parts together? I don't have a press, so I have to rely on my hammer and rivet setting kit. I seem to see the imprint of the post uh, in the cap of the other side. I hope that makes sense. So I don't really have any experience in uh, a hammer set for attaching rivets. Um, my initial thought for that would be to do a few tests on scraps of fabric attached to the interfacing and you'll want for your test you want it to be a similar thickness to what you'll be attaching to the finished bag. So um, for instance, you can, uh, what I do actually in my scrap bin, I have a few straps that I've made for um, past demonstrations. So I keep those around to use as little testers. And then in this particular instance, this is fabric attached to foam interfacing. So you want to do your little test through maybe a little piece of strap attached to fabric and foam just to replicate the thickness. So when you're doing your hammer test, you can test that out. Um, if anyone out there is using a hammer kit to install rivets, let us know in the comments about um, your suggestion for making sure uh, you're hammering just the right amount. 
Casey says, what is the price of the new uh, pattern four pack? Uh, it'll be $40 and that's for the four brand new patterns and the four videos, as well as all those extra files that I mentioned that come with it, such as the SVG files. Last question I've seen it often is, Okay. Uh, any of the bags come in multiple sizes? Well, that's a great question. The question, in case you didn't hear Danny, do any of those new projects come in multiple sizes? And three of the bags are just the single size. And then there's one bag pattern that is, uh, comes in two sizes, sort of like a handbag size and also a tote bag size. All right. Uh, all right. Danny is calling in on the question. So I apologize if I did not get to your question live, but I'll be back, back again next Sunday. And also next Sunday, we'll be showing the second, uh, not second, third and fourth uh, new patterns uh, that will be coming out September 26th. So for the giveaway today, I'm going to be giving away um, a four pack video bundle live on the show. And then the second winner will be like our usual giveaways. We'll draw the winner at the end of the day, this Saturday. So you have a week to enter for that one. So we're going to um, draw the first winner, the live winner. Um, I'll give you one more question. So the entries will be random out of all of the comments that we've gotten so far on tonight's show, either on Facebook or YouTube, we combine them all together. Um, I'll give you one more question to get uh, a last minute entry in. And my question is, what is your favorite new pattern so far out of the two that I shared already? So either um, this, this one's the Sky Harbor tote. And then this one is the Starling bag. So let me know in the comments, which of those two do you like better? And I'll give you a minute to get those answers in. And then uh, we'll draw one live winner. And the second winner um, will be randomly drawn out of all of the comments left on the show, both on Facebook and YouTube. And I'll draw that winner at the end of the day this Saturday, and I'll announce the winner on next Sunday's show. So, all right, Danny, ready to do the, the live giveaway winner? Absolutely. What number am I choosing from? Uh, one to 199. One to 199. So I'm gonna pick- uh, Now it's 203. 10. Pick number 10. All right, one through 20. Um, I'm going to pick number two. All right, Kim Ditsworth is the winner of the live giveaway of the four pack video bundle. Um, Kim, please email me after the show and I'll save your email address. And then when the bundle comes out on September 26, your bundle will be free. So congratulations to you and my email um, so that you can email me after the show is Sarah at sosweetness.com and that's Sarah with no H. So i um, super excited um, about the new patterns. Make sure to tune in next Sunday. I have two more new patterns to show you and one of them is a backpack. I think it's pretty awesome. I think you're going to like it. That's my favorite. Danny says that one's his favorite. Um, thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. I hope you have a great week and happy sewing. Bye everybody.